Hey guys, what's up? This is the PC Professor, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to put a logo in the bottom right hand corner of your videos. You can see it on this video right now if you look in the bottom right hand corner, and we see in the beginning I have a picture blown up. So, this was a request, and somebody wanted to know how to do this. So, I gave them a brief description, but I wanted to make a video so that they could actually see how to do it, and I thought that other people might have the same question. So, what we're going to need to do this is Sony Vegas. You also might need Photoshop, which I'll go over in a second. But Sony Vegas is a product made by Sony, and it costs money. They're up to version 10 now. I do not have version 10. This will work with many of the versions because this is a pretty basic um, function in it. But um, what you can do is actually get the, uh, the free trial over here. And I'll put a link to this in the description. And it's 30 days, and you can try it out. And it has all the functions of the real program just for 30 days. And you can see how you like it. Now another program that I'm going to use is Photoshop. So here's the website for Photoshop CS5. I'll put this in the description also. You can get a free trial of this as well, but once again, this will cost money. You can do this with other programs, but I like Photoshop for it the best. And um, all I'm going to do is cut out the picture. So if you don't want to or don't need to cut out the picture, then you don't need to do this part. So let's get to it. Oh, one more thing. I'm using the web browser Opera. And the reason that I'm using it is I saw on Lifehacker, they had an article posted, which I put in the description, about different web browsers and which ones are fastest, because a bunch of new web browsers have come out. And long story short, they actually rated Opera the best in all the categories that they did. So uh, this is Opera 11 that they rated the best, by the way. So I thought that I'd try it out and see if I liked it. I'll keep you guys posted whether I like it the best, but I'll put a link to Opera downloaded in the description as well in case you guys want to try it out. So let's get started. We're going to open up Photoshop here, and I have my picture. Um, the way that we're going to do this is just by using the magic wand tool. This picture helps because you can see that everything is outlined in black, which makes it really easy for the computer to find the area that it wants to cut it out. For some harder ones, you might have to use the, um, the this is called a magnetic lasso tool, which what you do is you click, and it'll kind of outline it for you. Uh, this works for things that don't have as uh, easy of a of an outline for you to do as this one is well defined and that way you can kind of define it for the computer and then it can help you find it. If it's harder than that, um, what you can also do is go into this button here which is going to make the whole thing a mask and if you use this, I have a brush on, if you use this and you color in certain colors, you see how it's, it's turning red when I have on black, that's actually going to do a selection. You can see that I just did that. Um, the red isn't what you're selecting and the white is. So if I went over him like this, you can see that I'm not selecting this part and I would cut out what's around it. Um, if you want me to go more in depth on that, I can, but for now, for our purposes, what I'm going to use is this magic wand tool. So pretty much you're just going to click on the area that you want to select, which here is the white space that's around him, which once again is very easily defined. So I'm just going to click and you can see that it outlines the entire thing for me. And then I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and that's going to go away and then control D deselects. Now I also want to remember to get rid of this part. Sometimes you forget it because it's not connected so it's not going to know that you want to select that but same thing. Delete on the keyboard you can see it's gone and deselect. So now we're going to save it and put it into Sony Vegas which I've already done. So you can see here I just put some uh, I put a screen recorder uh, over my background. I just moved the mouse around a little um, just so I can have some video in the background to show you how I did this. And you can see that I made two video layers, and I have the uh, Professor Frank, and I have the video behind it. So I'm going to do what I had first when he has uh, when he's kind of zooming into the background. So the way I did this was this uh, event pan crop button. So when you click on it, it gives you the screen here. Now, first of all, this is oriented to the actual picture and not the output. So if you right click and you say match output aspect, what this does is it makes the ratio the same as the output. You can see how up in the preview window, it's taking up the whole screen, whereas when I have it match source, it's not taking up the whole screen. So you're going to want to say match output aspect. And you can see that this isn't what you'd think when you look at it first. This is actually the window. So uh, when I move the window around, you can see how it's changing over here. So the way that you're going to want to do this is um, when it's zoomed out, you're going to actually want to have this pretty big. And now, uh, just to make things look neat, I don't want to have the, uh, the bottom like this because you can kind of see how he's cut off over here. So this is how I started it. And the way that I'm going to make it move is with keyframes, which are down here. 
So um, I'm just going to move this slider over and I'm going to look down here and I'm going to see that I'm at one second. You can also see that up here. So this is the add keyframe button. And then I'm going to make the animation last for about that long, halfway, 15 over here. And then, so on this section, I'm going to shrink this down. Actually, I'm going to make it bigger, I'm sorry. And I'm going to move this over like that. And you can see in the window, you can judge how big you want it to be. So, oops, wrong way. So I'll make it about that big, and I'll make sure that it's not, um, it's not showing the bottom like this, so it looks nice and neat. And there's my next keyframe, and that's all I have to do. And Sony Vegas is just going to keep it this size for the rest of the video. Now, the other thing that I did that you might want to do is I made the um, I made it a little bit see-through. And so the easy way to do that is to just drag the top of this down. And you can see right here, it just made them see-through. Now, if you want at the beginning here him to be full, that's called opacity when they're see-through. What you can do is right when the video starts, which is what I did, and you click on, uh, you, you click the, make it snap to the beginning of the video here, and you click on the track before it, and you click S on your keyboard, and that's going to split them, and now I have this one selected, and now I'm going to only bring it down on this one. So now when we watch the video up here, you can see that he shrinks down, and then the opacity changes as soon as the video starts. Now a couple other things I'm going to go over in this video briefly, is the ways that I make my video look a little bit better. Um, there's just three things that I do, that really help make your video quality look better and they're really easy in Sony Vegas. First of all, you're going to want to right click here and go to switches and disable resample. And what that does is it gets rid of the trails on your video clip that always occur for some reason and that way it makes it look nice and neat. The second thing is I'm going to go to color corrector and I'm going to click this uh, studio RGB to computer RGB. I'm going to drag it onto my clip here and what that does is just to apply as a color correction where uh, when you take clips the uh, the color scheme that they use in the camera, that's not the right word, but is uh, different than what's optimal for your computer monitor. So what that does is it changes the studio to the computer and it makes it look better. Third, we're going to go to sharpen and uh, we're just going to drag the reset to none on here and we're going to make this point one. And Obviously, that's just going to sharpen it. Um, I just think that looks better when it's uh, just a little bit sharper. I guess, uh, you know, it's not really necessary, but I like it. So, here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I want to remind you that when you like it, it really helps my channel. Um, that's how my videos get noticed. And if you want me to do a video, don't hesitate to either leave a comment on my most recent video, which right now is this one, or send me a personal message, and I can address whatever kind of problem or question you have.